But I have a question, uh, though. All right. How many public radio personalities does it take to change a light bulb? Hmm. Oh, that I don't know. How many? Well, we'll have that answer for you right after this pledge break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And the only thinker of it remembers Jerry Lewis telethons. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I heard. <laughs> I'm giggling on the inside. <laughs> okay, how heard. many public radio hosts does it take to change a light bulb? Mm. Oh, never mind. Who needs light bulbs? It's radio. No. Who's kerosene <laughs> lights? <laughs> how many Bush administration officials does it take to change a light bulb? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. There's no need to change anything. We made the right decision to stick with that light bulb. Mm. People who say that it burned out are giving aid and encouragement to the forces of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm guessing this is an old joke. <laughs> oh, yes, it's an old joke. It's an old joke. Well, we're old. Yes, look at Bender. Yes, yeah. Bender one for is an old joke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, 24th century old, old joke. Mm -hmm. Here's one for Thinkover, special for Texas. Knock, knock. No, who's there? Amarillo. Amarillo? Mm -hmm. Amarillo, Amarillo who? Amarillo, Amarillo fashion cowboy. No, Amarillo fashion <laughs> cowboy. Yeah. An Amarillo fashion cowboy. All right. Well, I thought you would like that. I thought it was kid. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't like to have to explain jokes to meat bags. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to go to chicken jokes since you're all meat eaters, you know. Mm -hmm. Robots oh, are fueled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Robots are fueled by alcohol, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and anchovy oil, mm -hmm. which is uh, the anchovies have become extinct in the 24th century. Mm -hmm. But since we're chickens are still around. This chicken goes into the library and he walks up to the librarian and says, Book. The librarian says, You want a book? Book. Any book? Book. So the librarian gives this chicken a novel and off it goes. An hour later, the chicken comes back and says, Book. Book. The librarian says, Now you want two books? Book. Book. So she gives the chicken, chicken two more novels. The chicken leaves, but again, comes back, so it comes back later. Buck, buck, buck. Three books? Buck, buck, buck. So the librarian gives the chicken three books, but she decides she's gonna follow the chicken and find out what's going on. And the chicken goes down the alley, out of the town and towards the woods. It goes into the woods, down to the river, down to the swamp, and there was a bullfrog. The chicken sets the books down right by the frog. The bullfrog looks at the books and says, Read it. Read it. Read it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Read it. Read it. <laughs> that's more relevant today, I think, than any time, man. You know, I don't think Reddit was even around when this joke book was written. <laughs> yeah, he said frog. I was waiting for the Budweiser joke. <laughs> Here's one for a Louisiana man. Ham and eggs, a day's work for a chicken, a lifetime commitment for a pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the basketball court? Mm, why? Well, because the ref was calling fouls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why did the chicken cross the road? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't even know why they crossed their legs. <laughs> well, to show the deer how to do it. No. <laughs> hey, when the rooster saw all the colored Easter eggs, he got jealous and he killed a peacock. <laughs> Why did the lollipop cross the road? Because it was stuck to the chicken. <laughs> oh, that's enough chicken jokes, I guess. All right. I'll tell you what, meatbags. Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> Did you hear about the thieves that stole an entire shipment of Viagra? Mm. Police are looking for a gang of hardened criminals. 
Okay. That's good. Good. I, that was a good one. I'm going to remember that one. Now, there was this old meatbag lady who never married. She specified in her will that her, her tombstone should say, born a virgin, lived a virgin, died a virgin. But that was too many words to put on the stone. So they just wrote, return unopened. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Returned unopened. Okay. A psychologist did a study of 300 people in their sex lives. Some of them said that they had sex almost every night. Others said that they had sex once a week. Another said that they had sex once or twice a month. One man said he had sex only once a year. The psychologist felt bad for him and went over, patted him on the back and said, Oh, that's too bad. I'm, I'm really sorry for you. Well, the man grinned up and said, Yes, but tonight's the night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, here's one. Oh, uh, hi there. I couldn't help but noticing the book that you're reading. Yes, it's about finding sexual satisfaction. It's interesting. Well, did you know that statistically, American Indian and Polish men are the best lovers? By the way, my name is Jill. What's yours? Me, Flying Cloud Kowalski. <laughs> nice to meet him, you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, three women were returning to their Hungarian village when they spotted a man, obviously very inebriated, walking ahead of them. As they watched, he stumbled and fell face down into a mud puddle. When they walked up to him, one woman turned him over to see if she recognized him. However, his face was so covered with mud, she couldn't tell. So she bent over and unzipped his pants. She remarked, Well, at least that's not my husband. <laughs> the, second, the, the, the second woman, peering over the first husband's shoulder, agreed, You're right. He's not your husband. <laughs> <laughs> It gets better. The third woman, somewhat older than the other two, bent over to look and said, Oh, he's not even from our village. <laughs> <laughs> Returned unopened. <laughs> a dedicated shop steward is in a convention in Las Vegas and decides to go into a brothel. Man after my own heart. He asked the man, is this a union house? No, it is not. She replies, so how much do the girls earn, the union man asked. Well, if you pay me $100, the house gets 80, and I pay the girl 20. The man says, that's terrible, and he stomps out. Finally, he finds a brothel where the man and says, yes, this is a union house. And if I pay you $100, what cut does the girl get? Well, she gets 80. Well, that's great, the man says. I'd like Tiffany. I'm sure you would, says the madam. But Ethel here has seniority. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That one, that's, that's, uh -huh. that's, uh -huh. I, 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 you know what, they, that's a misprint. That's a misprint, because I told this joke once before. Part of the joke is missing. Sorry about that. Uh, that's something union people know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, turn it into a union joke. We're playing the unions. Well, three women go out into a nightclub to see male dancers. One of the women wants to impress the others, so she pulls out a $10 bill and waves the dancer over. She licks the $10 bill and sticks it to his left butt cheek. Well, not to be outdone, the second woman pulls out a $20 bill, licks it, and slaps it on the other cheek. The dancer looks down at the third woman and raises his eyebrows. Thinking for a minute, she reaches into her purse she pulls out her ATM card, swipes it down the crack, grabs the $30 and goes home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you ever hear about the guy who had sex with his canary? <laughs> Came down with a bad case of the chirpies. Oh. And the worst thing about it is it's untweetable. Oh. <laughs> uh, no oh no. I'll get one more. An old woman is sitting in a rocking chair on her porch, petting her cat, Puff. A fairy appears and says, I'm here to give you three wishes. The old woman says, I wish I were 21 years old and beautiful again. Poof! All of a sudden she is. 
Now I wish, <clears throat> oh, now I'm young again. Now I wish I had a million dollars in this old house for a mansion. Poof, done. And now I wish that Puff were the handsomest man in the world and deeply in love with me. Poof, suddenly she's in the arms of the handsomest man in the world. He kisses her and says, darling, aren't you sorry that you had me fixed? <laughs> <laughs>